live from Los Angeles. Welcome back to Good Morning Lala. And I'm so excited to welcome to the show Ben Ivey, aka the fulfillment artist on hashtag Wealth Wednesday. Thank you for being with us of course, today. Of course, my pleasure. So tell us about your journey to becoming an expert in what you do. Great question. So I ran a couple of businesses before, and then I was based in Silicon Valley. And then, you know, similar to I'm sure yourselves, I had a really life-changing incident for me, which is, yeah, I lost one of my best friends, which was my dad to suicide. Mm. And I, I saw him the day before, and it just completely shook my world. So I quit the business, I handed it off to a new CEO, and I started wait, to wait, dive wait, slow in. Slow down. Your your dad committed suicide. Yeah. Okay. So mm. so what was that like for you? Oh, that was you know obviously an cr incredibly difficult experience. Oh my gosh, yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, well, you know, when I share my story and you know, I'm sharing it in, in Chinese in, in April, mm -hmm. it's, it's very fascinating just to see how impactful it is when you start mm -hmm. to speak to people, you know, imagining their hero and then mm -hmm. they just disappear. So for me, after that happened, I started to dive into number one, why it happened. And number two is, you know, is it just, you know, my dad that had these patterns mm -hmm. or is there other people as well? And, you know, reading your book, it seemed that, you know, you suddenly had suicidal thoughts as well. And like I found a decade. That, yeah. <laughs> it was very, <laughs> very fun. And it's been fascinating diving into, you know, all these different, you know, from neurolinguistic programming, you know, Tony Robbins and what he does and working out, you know, how do you really shift people very quickly? Because I wanted to you know, go on this mission to be able to help people that were in the worst place of their life and shift them as quickly as possible. So, you know, now I've managed to get the techniques and, and started to obviously, you know, run events in different places to be able to help people with this. And it's just been a, a very fascinating journey right. just to mm. understand people's psychology. But that's, I mean, this is kind of like the topic that we're talking about today. I mean, yeah. how do you shift? How going to that dark place, whether it's a little dark place or a lot of dark place, how do you shift out of that? And I think that people come to people, professionals, to help them do that. But the issue for me, I find that is, we can teach them, but they, at some point, they have to individually go, okay, and now I'm going to use the tool that I yeah. learned at this conference or with this coach or with whatever, and they're going to implement it. They have to do their own push-ups. do their own push-ups, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you can, I, I use an example of Everest, right? You can show them people the quickest way there, but you can't, you know, take them on your shoulders and walk them up there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they have to take responsibility for their lives. So, you know, it, you have to use different techniques depending on the people that you work with, but ultimately, you know, I think in life, you get to a point where you decide enough is enough and you start to make that change. And then from that moment, it's making those consistent practices. So when I work with people that are suicidal or I work with people that are very depressed, mm -hmm. it's getting them to that point where enough is enough and they start to switch things. And even our language, uh, I had a conversation with a client the other day who was saying, you know, I, you know, I just feel, re uh, I'm really depressed. And I said, are you or are you doing depression? Mm. And it's such yeah. a fascinating way in which to- Describe the difference in that. Sure, so when you say I am and you have something after it, how could you be anything different? So whether you say, oh, I'm such a perfectionist or you say I am mm -hmm. you know, th like this way, you can't be any different. Whereas if you say you're doing depression, it's a behavior and that you have the ability to change because it's not part of who you think you are and your own identity. Mm -hmm. uh, identity is probably the biggest thing that I work with with clients. It's fascinating. I just so love this and I love your work and I love the point you're making there sort of around like sort of ling language, not just describing your life, but it dictates your destiny mm -hmm. in a way. So mm -hmm. can you talk just a little bit about some of your favorite tips, tricks and techniques for getting people to make that shift? Sure. So I, the, the biggest thing that I do is I ask someone, you know, who are you? And most people no, don't have a bloody clue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really right. asked you that. Mm -hmm. And then I ask them, you know, who must they become in order to live the life that they want? And then we start to dive into what are the traits, what are the behaviors and how do you have to be if you were that person already? Because often people have to believe they have to do a certain thing in order to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. You know, when I get to the island, then I'll be uh, yeah, this and this and this. So actually working on their being and who they are right now, and then emulating whatever that is and moving that forward is probably one of the best things that I see with right. clients and it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just love this. Um, the, one of the first books that really changed my life was um, Neil Donald Walsh's Conversations with God. Yeah, yeah, and He yeah. talks about reversing this sort of pattern that we've all accepted, which is that you need to do in order to have so that you can be or feel mm -hmm, something. Mm -hmm. We talked about reversing that so that you put being first, feeling first, and then doing from that place, and then you have other things. Talk just a little bit about that. How do you, so once you've done this sort of identity conditioning uh -huh. process, what would you say is the hardest 
part for people to kind of wrap their head around it. Is it the new identity? I think the hardest part is that we're all humans, right? Ooh. So we're built for survival. So the mind is always looking for things that are wrong. Mm -hmm. You're always you know, worried about certain things. And we ask ourselves a lot of shitty questions sometimes. <laughs> <as well. laughs> so I think ultimately you know, something that I share with people is similar to, you know, you go to the gym every day to work out your body. You want to work out your mind in the same way. So whether it's gratitude or conditioning that identity, and then once you do it enough, it just becomes easy and it just becomes like naturally part of you as opposed to something that you're trying to be. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a good point. Um, you know, I've noticed that one of the things that people seem challenged most by is they say, oh, this new way of thinking and being feels inauthentic. It feels like not me. And mm -hmm. I often say, well, it just feels unfamiliar. So how do you help people with that? Mm. when they say, ah, oh, I want to embrace this new identity and I can see how constructive it would be, but it feels inauthentic. Yeah, I think that that's a fantastic point. And, and how often do people say that? Uh, you fake it till you make yes. it. And how, how long can I fake it till I'm actually there? <laughs> a long time. A long time. So yeah, with, with regards to that, I think the, the biggest thing that I say to them is, you know, it's just be it, right? Like be generous. Like what do you have to do to do that? You know what I mean? And I think it's just getting those small wins and those small successes and acknowledging them. Yeah. Because how often do we want these big successes or these big things to happen? And then we decide, okay, now I'm that way. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, now I'm a grateful person and now I'm contributing because I'm affecting a million people, right? Affect one person at a time and that will help you move so forward. So I'm curious yeah. to know because look, a lot of the spiritual work, all of it is, is an identity shift. That's the entire work of spiritual work. You're awfully young to know some of these distinctions, quite frankly. Do you feel like you are enlightened, if you will? Like, I mean, because there's somebody to teach somebody about these distinctions and have them kind of begin, begin to embody something. And there's a shift of someone who's actually kind of experienced themselves as the greatest like identity shift that I am experience. Do you feel like you've had like a major awakening or do you feel like it's just like this motivational distinctions that have transformed your life? Well, I, I think I, I wouldn't say, you know, I've had an major awakening. I'm enlightened. I'd never say something like that. I think ultimately I'm very aware of people's patterns. And I think that, you know, when you look in different people in life, whether it's the West or the East, I think what I've been very fortunate about is that I've been exposed to, you know, people at the top in San Francisco. I've been exposed to you know, a lot of very wealthy people in China. But what's most fascinating is seeing the common patterns between them. And just through that exposure mm -hmm. has allowed me to gain the skills to work with, you know, some very successful people yeah. that are just feeling incredibly lost in their lives. Yeah, your mm -hmm. consciousness is very, it's, it's on point. Very good. That's very yeah. kind of you to say, thank you. And I would, I, w I don't think it'd be too much to say you're awakened or enlightened. I don't think, I think that that's some far off thing that we think that only the masters or only the yeah. whatever. And I don't think that that's true. I think that, that it can happen right here, right now for anybody. Yeah. I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. I think what I'm most wary of is the the language that people use mm, and often mm -hmm. what people associate you know with God or enlightenment mm -hmm. or something like that can bring negativity to people Divide because of people. how it's used mm -hmm. especially out in China as an example mm -hmm. so I've become extra aware of the yeah. language that I yeah. use yeah. as you can <laughs> well imagine. <laughs> so tell us about that. What's the difference between here and China like what what what's so different? About I mean, the, what what the isn't Parliament? the difference? I mean it's it's completely mm. it's, they're just worlds apart. Worlds apart. And, and the the you know, social media is obviously completely different. The language, the way in which people interact. Uh, they talk about something called guanxi, which is like building relationships with people. And often you'll do some, like you'll do business with uh, someone that you build a relationship with, as opposed to what the best, you know, cost-benefit analysis is. Yeah. And it's it's very fascinating to see that you know you'll go to a business meeting, they'll take you out for lunch, and actually <laughs> this is quite funny. So when I first started dating my girlfriend, who's Taiwanese, I couldn't tell the distinction between as a British person, when I get food, I finish everything that's on my plate because, you know, that's right. what you do as a British person. <laughs> yeah. that's polite. Now, in China, you overfeed people to show love, which obviously led to an issue of me gaining about 30 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Four hours of a traditional so, so meal. Yeah, I'm like, these people are challenging me. Yeah. I'm like, all right, let's, let's take it on. And really my gut took a little bit too much. It took about six months to lose that. <laughs> but there's little traditions like that. And like yeah. the way you cheer someone, you have to get it lower than their glass to show respect. And there's these little things that sort of add up that you have to be a little bit more aware of as such. Love that. That's so Love interesting. That. Well, you're a very evolved soul, in my opinion. Yeah. Thank so, you very yeah. much. How can people work with you? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Well, I mean, I'm on different social media platforms. You know, WeChat in China and then yeah, the usual ones that most people are on. I don't really use Twitter that much because I, I just, that's not for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, do you do one-on-one? -on -one? Do you do groups? Do you do yeah, training? Yeah, so I do one-on-ones. Uh, -on I do everything online because of my schedule. 
And then I run events as well. So I run events in China and I run events in the UK. And it's cool because I have trainers that are running my events as well now. Nice. And we're starting to do them in Chinese and starting to move forward. Scale up. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a challenge in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. Doing them in Chinese, didn't think that was going to happen <laughs> quite so soon. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great challenge to have. It's a good problem. Uh, well, congratulations. Absolutely. So, yeah, so thank you very much. Stay tuned, we'll bring it back.